You're ready, Juan. Happy World Environment Day, everybody. My name is Juan Pablo Celis, a Youth Program Coordinator for the UN Environment Program, and it is my great pleasure to be one of your moderators for this exciting event, a call to action organized in partnership with the Civil Society Unit of the United Nations Department of Global Communications. Today, we are going to hear about young leaders, entrepreneurs, and media personalities that are joining the call for generation restoration. To kick off this commemoration, let's hear from a very talented young poet, Jordan Sanchez, who's written a special piece for this year's World Environment Day. Have you ever seen time fly? Watch it slip through your fingers like a cloud passing by. Too slow to notice it leaving, too fast to make it stop. All we've known is to destroy like it's breathing. The pitter patter of raindrops match the sounds of clocks tick, counting down. Tick, tick. How lucky we are to live. We are a fraction of a second in Earth's lifetime. Yet she is our only lifeline. Resilient, we stand on our own two feet. I'll tell you, reimagining the future has never tasted so sweet. Like nectar to a bee, honey to a home. No one can do this alone. Sick. The promise of restoration lives within us. We see her in the hues of the youth. And she's asking you, what will you stand for? Now is the time for our regeneration. What an important message to start this virtual event. And um, to everyone online, uh, where are you watching us from? How do you celebrate World Environment Day? We want to hear from you. So please uh, write down your comments below and use the hashtag generation restoration. We want the future of uh, all these voices to come together and bring in this uh, generation restoration movement into force. And now I want to start in our first interactive panel, a conversation that, um, you know, that bring in so many different voices and perspectives that sometimes are left unheard. And I want you um, really uh, to give everyone that it's online um, congratulations for bringing your voices to World Environment Day and to make your voice heard. So uh, first, I would like to um, uh, bring it into this panel, um, UNEP's Executive Director, Inger Anderson, a, a special message also from the Under Secretary General, Melissa Fleming, from family medicine physician and media personality, Dr. Mike, and UNEP's Young Champion of the Earth, Zambi Mati. So let's start the conversation with uh, Executive Director Inger Adamser. Welcome, Executive Director. Thank you so much for joining us. You are really keen to youth engagement and we are really happy to have you in this conversation. So um, first, I, I would like to ask you, um, now that this UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration has started, what, what role can young people play in securing the protection of the environment and restoration of our ecosystems? Well, first of all, thank you very much, Juan Carlos, and thank you very much for doing this and to all the participants uh, who are here, because we know that young people, uh, UNDP recently did a poll and it showed that 70% of young people between 14 and 18 think we are in a climate emergency, right? They, they know this. It's not something that they want to debate. It's a fact. And they know this. And they also get that we can't sort of saw the branch over on which we are sitting, that we need to restore the earth, that we can't assume that the earth will just continue to give us um, without us protecting it. So young people have 
a lot of power, maybe more power than sometimes older people attribute to young people. And first of all, you are going to be the big spenders. We are going to be the old age pensioners here. So you are going to be the big spenders. You are stepping into careers. You are going to lead. And many of you are leading already, right? If you're still in your teens, maybe not yet, but you're stepping into that space already. And you're taking the voice. You're taking the microphone. And in so doing, I think that is where there comes huge power in how you spend your money, how you select your career, how you vote, right? And, and how you influence those in your community and how you mobilize. It's all of, of that. And I think we certainly feel that, um, you know, the actions that you do in your community, the actions that you do with your career choices, and the actions that you do in your family and the actions that you take into the voting booth, each of these matters. And this is not a left or right or a political party X or Y. It is making sure that those who we select to lead us are leading with intergenerational justice in mind. So I think there's a lot of power really. And it's about the secretary general often says, and this will be my last point to your question, power is not given, it is taken. So grab it. That's what I would say. Thank you so much, um, Executive Director. It's really a pleasure to uh, have you in this conversation. And um, it is, it, I think what you emphasize on uh, young people's crucial role in securing the protection of the environment and the ecosystems is it's, it's something that we really need to uh, remember because sometimes uh, I, I think that uh, as young people, um, if we are in uh, some of the sectors that are not so, you know, related to the environment per se, we think that we don't have much of a power to influence or to change, but that is not the case. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I want you um, now um, a, a, we, uh, to open the space for um, Undersecretary General Melissa Fleming. Uh, she has a special message for us. Uh, she heads the Department of Global Communications, which is actually our partner for today's event. And we are very thankful to have the support of Secret Under Secretary General Melissa Fleming. Happy World Environment Day. I'm excited to join you for this event to help kick off the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. This decade is especially timely because restoring ecosystems is important, not just in and of itself, but because it is key to solving so many other environmental challenges. Biodiversity loss, of course, but also climate change. And it also helps to ensure that local communities have jobs and can build sustainable economies. Repairing nature, in short, means a healthy planet. And a healthy planet means we are well on our way towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. The science shows us that nature can help us if we help nature. So over the next 10 years, enormous possibilities lie ahead. Every action will count, and everyone has a role to play. It is the things we do, large and small, that can help contribute to a more sustainable world. Start using less plastic, shop and buy locally, reduce our carbon footprints, volunteer in our local communities, raise our voices for change. You young people will be essential to the success of this decade. More and more, we at the United Nations are partnering with young leaders like yourselves to tackle these environmental challenges. That's because we know you are the instigators the ones already actively participating and bringing change to your peers and your communities. We can only call on you to keep it up. Your dedication, leadership, and passion is really making a difference and inspiring us all. Thank you. We thank the Department of Global Communications and Undersecretary General Melissa Fleming for bringing, bringing this support um, to, to the uh, commitment of ecosystem restoration. And by joining forces 
with the UN Environment Program on this call to action. I am really happy to see so much interaction. I was uh, at the same time looking at all the comments that people are, are writing online. And I, I'm really excited to, to hear where you're coming from, how you celebrate World Environment Day, what does generation restoration mean to you? What are you doing in your communities to protect the environment? We want to hear from you. And this conversation is really about that, about bringing together different ideas, solutions, and commitments to this decade on ecosystem restoration. So now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, as a, as a young and successful physician, you have seen firsthand the leadership of young medical professionals in these very critical times. And, and I wanted to ask you um, if, if you could talk to us about that connection uh, between the environment's health and our health. Thank you so much, Juan, for that introduction and for all the work that's being done with the United Nations Environmental Program. You know, for me, uh, as a young doctor who's been successful on social media, I've seen the impact that one person, that each individual can have, even if they play a small role when they come together, because it's really about a collective uh, motion. It's about a collective goal. And here, the goal is obviously protecting the environment, focusing on generation restoration. And today I wanna to share with you how interconnected we all are because we share the same planet. For To have a healthy environment means to have a healthy life. The interconnectedness of a good biodiversity, of a well-balanced environment, really leads to a healthy physical, mental, and social state. For example, if we think about uh, when the ozone layer becomes depleted, how we see an increase in skin cancer rates, when we see um, the corals being destroyed in our oceans, we're actually losing the ability to create medicines because the coral reefs are nature's medicine cabinet. They are our ability to survive and be healthy. When we think about access to healthcare, we need to be able to deliver access but in some areas when the environment is suffering, we are also suffering. And when you think about how we want health to be a priority, meaning the health of the environment and the health of our family and friends, we need to think about small steps that we can do to institute these changes. Because while not everyone is gonna create the next innovative solution that will solve global warming and climate change and all of these issues, but you can take one small step and as a collective, make a huge difference. Ride a bike to work instead of using a car. Small change that will benefit the environment and your health. When you're at work, instead of taking the elevator, take the steps. It will benefit the environment. It will benefit your health. Think about instituting a policy where one, one day of the week, perhaps Mondays, it's a common thing we do here in the United States called meatless Mondays where you decrease the amount of animal products you consume throughout the week, thereby decreasing emissions. These are all really simple things that you can institute on a daily basis that will benefit your health and the health of the environment. You can't do anything in this life, whether you wanna be a successful rock star, basketball player, doctor, without having health. Health comes first. And when I, as a doctor, talk about health, I'm also talking about the health of the environment and I hope you do as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mike, for bringing this into perspective. And you know that connection between our health and the environment's health, uh, I think it's really important. And I, I would like to give space now to um, uh, another panelist. Uh, she's Nzambi Mati. She is the uh, UNEP Young Champion of the Earth. She is an entrepreneur, she is a young leader, and she has transformed her community. And she has really uh, changed that uh, plastic issue in into an opportunity. And uh, I really want to congratulate you, Zambi, for this really amazing work that you do in, in your community. And I want to hear what, what are your thoughts um, on, on young people's role in, in protecting the environment and, and restoring our ecosystems? Thanks so much, uh, Juan. Um, so yeah, my name is Nzambi, and I think I will echo what Inga said uh, in her 
um, statement in her briefing that um, it's true that um, ideally speaking, it, the future of the environment and, and the state um, in which we live uh, and our existence with human uh, with the nature almost uh, solely sits on us as young people. And by the time we we reach um, our by the, as in our in our culture, when we say by the time our sun our sun sets, it, we pass the baton to the next generation to come. And so, ideally speaking, this journey and this battle is for us to 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 encounter and conquer. So I believe every every young person should have like the mindset of how do how is my existence affecting the environment and and how is my actions affecting the environment even if it's just at a very small scale. Uh, like right now in my in my neighborhood and also like in where we work I've made sure because in Kenya we don't have a, like a waste manage like waste separating system yet it's not part of our culture but I've, I've with the help of uh, like my team members and the community within our surrounding now every household separates um uh, the, their waste just simple organics and non recyclables and recyclables and then for us we will continue from there we will separate now the plastics the metals, the cardboards, etc., depending on the material. Excuse me. So what I believe is, this is um, not to sound um, uh, like a, um, military-wise, but this is a battle we need to we need to fight, and this we need to bring the call from all guys because right now in the ocean. They're saying um, there's like there's a ocean garbage patch which is about twice the size of Texas. Now imagine that plastic. Some of the plastic that has been collected from the environment goes as old as 1960s. Now imagine the population in the 1960s and imagine the population now, and then imagine the impact what our population will have in the next maybe what 40, 50, 100 years to come if we don't do something. So I think. When it comes to plastic, it's 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 a it's a relatively complex solution, but I think the most complex solution needs simple um, complex problems need simple solutions, and I think it starts from the basic household levels, as you said, reducing the plastic we consume. For example, if you can use a recyclable uh, uh, like a reusable bottle, use that. Don't use like the plastic packaging. If you can if you can take out, if you're going for takeout feel free to carry your container like right now um and this is one thing that um, we have had here in kenya because of increase like because of covid there's a lot of like takeouts because it was not our culture and so now the plastic uh, consumption like the plastic uh, uh, the plastic we produce has increased so now that's that's also another effect we didn't think of from our end so we now have to think how how can we bring like for example take when you go for when you ask for a takeout when the when the when the delivery comes, the delivery guy comes with a container, and then you give them back. So such things have to in, be engraved within our system, because I think um, when it comes to plastic, uh, we have we have uh, a, a, a long a long way to go, but it can be done. Thank you uh, so much, Sambi, and um, I really uh, it, it's now and it's sticking in my mind now what you've said on. Uh, that complex issues need, you know, simple uh, solutions. And I think that's something that it's, uh, I would remember from this conversation. And um, I, I, I want to, um, you know, encourage everyone again online to, to share these answers as well. These questions that we are, we're posing in the panel that we, we want to hear your answers as well to these questions. And I see so many people connecting online from Colombia, from Spain, from India. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and for raising your voice and adding your voice to this to this uh, generation restoration movement. And um, I would like to now uh, uh, bring this question to, to uh, a panelist. And uh, if there is one advice that you can um, that you could give to young people on how they can contribute to the health of the planet, particularly in times of COVID-19, what would that advice be? So let's start with Dr. Mike. I think you have to think as an individual and then grow with the power of the collective. Do not think that if you do not have the answer to all of the problems, 
you have no role. You absolutely have a role. Each one of your actions, whether it's using a reusable water bottle, taking the stairs or a bike to work, you have the power to make major change. Like it was beautifully said just now, these complex issues can be solved with simple solutions. And the simple solutions start with you. Yeah, you're, you're totally right, um, Dr. Mike. And, um, and I think that uh, we, we, all of the panelists share the same uh, feeling regarding these issues, but I want to give that also that, um, the, pose this question to Executive Director Inger Anderson. Uh, what would be that advice that you would give to young people in these times? Well, um, I think, first of all, what, what Mike's, and please don't call me Executive Director, I'm just Inger, you know, <laughs> but thank you for the respect, but you know, but at any rate, uh, I think what Mike just said is exactly right. You were born for this moment, that's why you're sitting in this panel. You have fire in the belly. That's why you are engaging and, and organizing and being on social media and mobilizing because you get that what we have done to the planet cannot be sustained and that we need to repair our damage and you are taking control. And so I think, you know, getting informed, yes. Understanding, yes. Mobilizing, absolutely. It's unfair that this is left to this generation. It's unfair. Some of us have been in this battle for decades. And what gives me hope as a longtime warrior is that it is not the lone voice in the wilderness anymore. I was doing this, I hate to say it, in the 80s, working in Sudan. And now I sit here in Kenya and speak to you. I spent six years in Sudan working on desertification issues, right? So this is a long battle, but you are now many more. There are many more voices. And that's what gives me hope. Um, so be brave, be fearless, be that flea in the ear that keeps bugging and then organize. As we heard Mike say, start, start with yourselves and your own footprint and then make it bigger and be the change. Be the change that you all know the world needs to see. Thank you. Yeah, you, you, you're you totally, you're totally right, Inger. I, I, I feel that, um, that uh, you know, that in the past few years, myself, I have experienced that, you know, it, we have one another and there's so many more young people and people out there that are working, you know, towards um, the same goal. And I, and I think it, we're not alone anymore in this, in this fight. So, uh, so I, I think it's uh, watching all the people um, writing comments on the on the on the on YouTube live and on social media about this conversation just even brings that that you know up to speed even more and uh, I'm really thankful to see everyone so so uh, committed to the environment and I would like to pose that question also to to uh, Zambi what what would be that advice? Um, I think for me it's uh, let's let's try one step at a time or rather let's do it one step at a time. Because uh, when when it comes to matters environment, it sometimes tends to be big. And and, and you feel, it, it's, it's sometimes when you speak about it, it seems like it's a problem that can never be solved because it goes as old as time. Because the effects of environment, it's as a result of actions that we as human beings have been doing from ages. So I think the first step will be a step at a time. And the, fa the first step at a time is the way Dr. Mike said, if you can take the stairs, take the stairs. Don't take the lift. If you can not eat meat, and uh, this one I really uh, would want to hear if that's possible in Kenya, have meatless Mondays. So if, 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 if it's something that you can do that in the, small, in the most small and minute state within your local, within you as a person, and then diversify a step at a time. Because uh, as we say in Kiswahili, a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. So I also think it also has a saying in English, it goes that way from not wrong. So I think, yeah, it's a step at a time. Thank you very much, Zambi. And, and, and just, to, um, just to wrap up on this panel that uh, I, I want to um, just follow up with that, with that question um, that I just uh, asked is, uh, are you really hopeful for the future then? Do you think that on this start of the decade of ecosystem restoration, um, are we gonna be able to really bring this generation restoration movement together? Are you hopeful for the future? 
So I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to uh, Inger for this answer. You know, I'm, I'm often asked that question and my answer is always, you can't be in the environment business and not be hopeful because you step into the environment. What do you see? You see beauty, you hear, you hear birds, you, you see flowers, the creation of which is just amazing. No human could have thought of it. It, it is something that hits our inner spirit, our, our sense of wonder. Um, and so that's why people want to conserve and preserve uh, and restore environment because they get that it is important. So am I concerned? Yes. Am I uh, raising the alarm bell? Absolutely. We have these three planetary crises, the climate crisis, the biodiversity and nature crisis, and the pollution and waste crisis. But what gives me hope is that people know and that people are mobilizing and organizing and taking to the streets, taking to social media and demanding change. And as we heard both from Dr. Mike, um, as well as from Zambi, making change in their own lives, in their own communities, through their own influencing. And each one of you is doing that. So yes, I'm hopeful, but we can't let our guard down. We need to continue pushing because this is an existential challenge that we have to fix. Thank you very much, Inger. And now I'd like to give now the, uh, the floor to Zambi for this question. Yes, Zambi, um, you? Um, I think, um, not to sound like a broken record, but I think Inga just said it all. Um, it's, you cannot, as, as, as she well put it, you can't be in this, in this space and not be hopeful because hope is the fuel. It's the infinite fuel, and it's a fuel that uh, that uh, powers uh, generations to come, and still time ends. So I think what um, what I personally would hope for is everyone has a purpose in this world, and everyone has a role to play in this world. So I think our purpose and our role has to have a coexistence, or rather, um, uh, the correlation has to be in harmonious with the nature. Otherwise, why would you be put in such a beautiful space and only for it to, to, to create a disconnect, if I may say so. So as, as she well said, it's the future is bright if we take the right steps. In the same, same point, it is not that bright if we don't take the right steps. But I'm really happy and I'm really fortunate because we have the tools like social media and we have tools uh, on the technology space and in the activism space and in the policy making space. We have we have the tools and we're constantly building the right tools to help build that. So I think I am positive and I choose to say we will we'll win this battle. I think I choose to be a positive. Thank you, Zambi. I, I am positive as well because I think watching uh, uh, places like in the UN opening for young people even more every time. That's also something that makes me hopeful for the future. For the past uh, five to six years that I've been, uh, you know, engaging with the UN, I realized that every year that passes by, young people are really opening these spaces and the UN is opening these spaces for young people to develop. So it's, it's, it's moving and I'm hopeful as well. Uh, thank you very much to our great panelists for today uh, in this first session. Um, we are really good on time. So if you have any last words, uh, feel, feel free to open and, and, and say it. I was just gonna chime in Juan and uh, mention from my perspective as a doctor and my experiences on social media, probably because I'm a natural born optimist, but I believe in humanity. I believe in you. And while social media absolutely has some downsides and we need to discuss that, I think what I've seen on social media and the power of coming together as a collective, focusing on our moral obligations as humans on this planet, I believe that young people are gonna be able to change everything using social media as their tool to make it happen. So I'm optimistic. I'm grateful for everyone here today and uh, allowing me the opportunity to talk about this. And um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it together. Thank you.
Great. Anyone else wants to just say a few last words? Inger? I'll just say that it's such a pleasure. And look, we are um, tomorrow's World Environment Day. Um, that is the day back in 1972 when um, the conference, uh, referred to as the Stockholm Conference, took place that created the United Nations Environment Program. That's a time 50 years ago nearly where the world's nations came together and said, look, we have a problem. And at that point, it was largely the pollution problem that it was emerging. There was, you know, rivers were bubbling and acid rain was falling. And there was an understanding of that back in the 70s. But now I think that what we understand is so much more. And that's why I agree with Dr. Mike. Look, now we have all these tools. We understand climate. We understand chemistry. We get how nature and climate and, 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 and uh, the hydrological cycle and biodiversity, how the whole thing interlinks. So that knowledge that we have, we now need to deploy it. And we are deploying it. And I completely have faith in the next generation that you will be that generation that will fix this. Um, so let me stop here and just thank you, Juan Carlos, uh, uh, Juan Pablo, uh, for, for this opportunity and all the panelists uh, that are here now, but also those that will follow uh, for, what, uh, for your commitment and your dedication. Thank you. Thank you very much, Inger. And uh, Zambi, you want to say a few last words? Um, I think I will just say, I think now we just do it. We can speak, we can plan, we can draft, we can do research, but it will, all, it will all only happen if we do it. So let's just do it. You could not say that better, um, Zambi. Uh, it's time that we do it. And uh, I am just really, really happy to see all these comments on, on, on YouTube and on social media. So uh, all the speakers, when you get a chance to look into the YouTube account and, and look into the comments of what people have said about this and the answers they've given, um, it, it's really inspiring and exciting. Thank you very much uh, once again for these inspiring messages, Inger, Dr. Mike, Zambi, and for joining forces for the environment and for, you know, keep inspiring young people with your work. Thank you very much. And now we're going to move into a call to action segment. So the call to action is um, basically a time where we're going to encourage everybody around us in our environments, in our neighborhoods, in our communities to join generation restoration. So um, now I just uh, want to hear from a special call from uh, Melati Wishen. She is a groundbreaking young environmentalist from Indonesia, and she's also the founder of Bye Bye Plastic Bags and Utopia. So let's hear from Melati. Happy World Environment Day 2021. I am so excited that the United Nations Environment Program is launching the UN Decade on Ecosystems Restoration for People and for Nature. Did you know that ecosystem degradation is already affecting the well being of at least 3.2 billion people? That's 40%, 40% of the world's population. We cannot go as business as usual and we must change today. And besides, another fun fact, did you know that ecosystem restoration, on the other hand, contributes to the achievement of all the 17 sustainable development goals by their target 2030, including the elimination of things like poverty and hunger. So ecosystem restoration is key. As we already know, this is our moment. We cannot turn back time, but we can take action. We can grow trees. We can green our cities. It are those small collaborative steps that we can do today that will make a difference on the long term. 
For this year's World Environment Day, we are challenging young people all around the world to reimagine, recreate, and restore our ecosystems. So as a young change maker, go out there today and be challenged to create solutions around you. And this also counts for all levels of society, not just us young change makers, but political leaders, uh, community leaders. If you're a CEO, a general manager, a farmer, a teacher, we all have a role to play to ensure that we are working towards a future that we are proud of. Change starts now, and it starts with each and every one of us. And together, we can be hashtag generation restoration. Thank you very much, um, Elati, for reiterating that everyone everywhere can be generation restoration. Everyone and that is uh, joining us online, please comment. Uh, what is your commitment to join this generation restoration movement? And to continue this call to action, um, we have a really special message from Catalina Rovallo, who is a Colombian TV presenter, and she's also the founder of Vida Friendly who has an encouraging message to young people globally. I am very excited to share this story with so many young people around the world who have a great interest in protecting our planet. I am Catalina Roballo, a Colombian television host, environmentalist, and defender of animal rights. I use my digital platforms to talk about sustainability. I am the president of Animal Voices Foundation in Colombia, and I am the creator of Vida Friendly, a project where I do online and face-to-face -face workshops with experts in different areas to teach about climate change, zero waste, farm-based diet, and sustainable fashion. Today, I want to remind you that we have the great power to change everything, and that power is in our consumption habits. We can transform industries and even governments if we understand that our individual decisions are not insignificant, and uh, that the protection of our ecosystem, our natural resources and biodiversity on the planet begin with the brands that we support, with the ecological actions that we have in our day to day and obviously in our diet. You are the restoration generation, the restoration of ecosystems and also the restoration of awareness. We need to restore the way we relate to nature. We need to make consumer decisions thinking collectively to change our environment. Because if we continue to the same, we will continue to have the same destructive industries and we will have the same governments without a commitment to our planet. So raise your voice, multiply your message, be a leader in your environment, influence your community with your example. All of us from our individuality can do powerful acts to transform the serious environmental problems that we have. Thank you for being in this event because that means that we are warriors of the planet. Be proud of the wonderful work you do in favor of the environment. And remember that not act is insignificant. I am deeply admire you because being part of the change means thinking and acting differently for most people. And that is for the brave. What a really inspiring message from uh, Catalina Roballo. And um, I'm just uh, really thankful to have her participation in this. A call to action, and it's uh, it's it's really a, a, it's really interesting to see how she empowers people to have you know a lifestyle that is friendly with the environment. And I continue to see um, great interaction on social media. Um, so please, everyone, share your commitments to the planet on the comments below. Use the hashtag Generation Restoration um, for social media posts. And please, uh, you know, take take people around you into this into this generation restoration movement, and uh, and to bring together, um, you know, ideas and solutions that are 
uh, that are good for us and that are good for the environment. So uh, please keep that, 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 that strength and that passion forward. Thank you very much. And this is the, um, this is, uh, the end of the call to action segment, but now we have really, really exciting uh, and really exciting interactive conversation. And I would like to pass it over to my friend, Jadea Spencer, the executive director of the International Youth Leadership Institute, who will be the moderator for our next segment. Welcome, Jadea. Thank you so much, Juan, and thank you to everyone called, like joining in from all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I noticed that there are folks in the chat who are coming from as far away as Japan. I'm like, what time is it? Thank you for spending your evening with us. Thank you for coming from all over the world. Um, I'm super excited to uh, introduce this conversation that we're having. As the executive director of the International Youth Leadership Institute, I come from the faraway land of Brooklyn, New York. Um, and where we come from, we say spread love, it's the Brooklyn way. Um, and youth leadership for us, uh, when we think about leadership, is not necessarily being the person in the room who is the loudest or being the person who has all the great ideas in the world, but is being the person who is most committed to your improvement of yourself and looking out for those who are around you and improving any space that you're in, leaving it better than how it was when you first came into it. And that's Islam as well. That's how we operate wherever we go. And so I'm excited to be here in the presence of so many people around the world who are absolutely committed to seeing the world and seeing our planet and our ecosystems be better than they are before. Uh, this conversation is going to be interactive. This conversation is going to be uh, also multilingual. If you see me like, you know, like flailing around in Espanol or, you know, because I mean, you know, it's like, if you see just like little bits here and there, please bear with me. Um, I'll, I can, you know, talk in a few languages, but I speak one fluently. So uh, with that being said, uh, am I forgetting anything? Ah, well also please make sure to put in the chat for yourselves using hashtag generation restoration. We want to continue to learn about your commitments and see like what you're gonna be doing after the session. This is not just about let's talk, have a good time and then just leave it there. This is about, no, what are you sincerely going to do? And you will hold yourself and your families will get to hold you accountable as well for that too. So with that being said, we have a message from someone special. His name is Mr. Bear Gorillas. So you may know him. Uh, Mr. Bear Gorillas is the, you know, he, among many things, is one of the youngest people to ever scale Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world at 21,141 whole feet high. Um, but in addition to that, for seven years, he also hosted Man vs. Wild, like 1.2 billion people viewed that on Discovery Channel. You may know him from there um, or from his environmental work in protecting our planet. So without further ado, we have a special message from him for you on that day. So I'll pass it to him. Hey guys, Bear Grylls here, and such an honor to be joining you all for arguably the most important day of the year, World Environment Day. And I feel that I've been so lucky over the years to kind of see this planet from every angle, uh, from the summits of the highest peaks to the, uh, to the densest jungles, uh, the icy polar oceans, uh, and most other places in between. And really it's often I find being a humbling experience to see how nature like exists around us, uh, always adapting to our human interactions, uh, how it finds new ways to, to survive side by side with humanity. But over the years, I have also witnessed a darker side of that interaction. From the very real, very devastating loss of so many of these vast and spectacular ecosystems, to an ever-changing set of terrains and, and climate, all of which stretches animals and habitats to their limits in the fight for survival. And to me, there is no doubt that we are witnessing wilderness at the moment pushed to the brink. But I also believe it's something that we can stop. For me, learning in nature was always way more powerful than just learning about nature. And I think there's you know, something personal about 
being out there and living in the wild places that clearly shows us how society impacts wilderness. And it's been through seeing that impact close up that my life and my understanding for the planet has grown. It's like I've lived it, I've breathed it, and I know. And that's why for us together today to truly build a generation restoration, a hashtag generation restoration, we have to invest more educational opportunities that actually take young people outdoors. Opportunities that teach us things like how plants and animals actually live, how we can care for them, and how we can minimise our impact most effectively. As the Chief Ambassador of World Scouting, I am inspired every day by the projects that Scouts do to care for their surroundings. From planting mangroves in Tanzania, to helping baby turtles get safely to sea in Malaysia, to rehabilitating coral reefs in the Maldives. Time and time again, the work that young people are doing gives us all hope that we can reverse that devastating loss of the ecosystems that I've witnessed over the years. But I also know we can't do this alone, but we can do it together. Whether it's something like as simple as picking up trash or the, you know, anything else that doesn't belong in a habitat, to banding together with your peers to be that powerful voice to decision makers around you in your life. One of the great missions uh, i found is to be able to share what I love about nature with others, and especially as a dad with my kids. Ours must be a legacy of good. We are the guys who've got to be the fighters for our planet. And we've got to make sure we are firmly on the right side of history when it comes to championing environmental causes. And my hope is that each of us here today can share our love for nature with others, to show them how to care for it, and to inspire many others to take action. As I said, today is World Environment Day. Let's make it a day to count, a day to remember, and a day that we begin positive change on every level. Together, we can do this. Wow. So that was amazing. Um, and you know, like he's talking about, you know, in like protecting our environment and leaving a positive change. Like I appreciate that note that he made about legacy because it's something that people tend to only talk about, like, you know, once you're older, but the truth is that you're making an impact on the world every single day that you live in how you interact with your friends and your family and how you interact with your environment around you. It's always something to start thinking about, you know, like what kind of impact do you want to leave? What impact do you want to put in the rooms that you step into? And how do you make those spaces more free, more just, more equitable and safer for our environment as well? So we're about to jump into our conversation, which I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm on fire just having heard that. Um, our theme for this panel discussion is reimagine, recreate and restore in terms of our commitment to the decade of ecosystems restoration and so with all of that it requires like you know using our imagination without further ado i'm going to pass it straight to nisreen nisreen el saim is a climate activist and a whole it get this like a junior negotiator of intergovernmental climate change platforms from sudan i'm really grateful to have the african continent represented and you see her young face but she's also a whole physicist y'all um, she got her degree from the University of Khartoum, and I just really excited and honored to have you here with us. Very interested to know from you, you know, the, the practical, you know, tips and tools. We'd like to learn one about what you do, <laughs> but then also about, you know, the practical tips and tools that you would share and, and why you feel that it's important to be lifting your voice today, you know, of all days in recognition of the of World Environment Day. Assalamu alaikum. And um, thank you very much, Jediah. And um, I'm very glad to be here with you all today. And um, happy Environment World Day, first of all. Uh, my name is Nisreen Al-Saima, I'm from Sudan. 
As you mentioned, I'm a junior negotiator with the African Group of the Negotiators. Um, currently, we started negotiating the um, SBs, uh, the subsidiary bodies of the um, UNFCCC Convention on Climate Change. And um, it's not working well with the online format. So uh, really COVID-19 impacted us the most. Um, also, I'm the chair of Sudan Youth Organization on Climate Change, which is a youth organization in Sudan. Uh, as you also mentioned, I got my degree on physics and I have a master degree on renewable energy because I always thought that with challenges like climate changes, always solutions and, and opportunities. And I think climate um, renewable energy is a real uh, opportunity for um, defeating climate change and also pursuing development. Um, well, to be very much brief on what we're having right now, um, I'm, I'm very glad to see Inger um, and I really wish to meet her if I met her actually before when she was in Sudan, but unfortunately the desertification process is uh, it's happening. It's actually increasing more. And it's uh, very important to say and echo what my colleagues earlier mentioned, climate rest environment restoration actually um, um, contribute to all of the 17 uh, um, SDGs, but also destroying the environment actually um, limit all of the 17 SDGs also. Um, so Sudan is a very much perfect match for, for what I mentioned before, where actually um, destroying uh, environment is very much linked to peace and security, to hunger, to poverty, to inequalities, to less education, to um, more wars, to very um, weak infrastructure, to very weak cities, to a very weak, um, uh, let me say, uh, infra, like institutes. And, and so on. Um, so, well, it's all connected together and climate change, uh, biodiversity, everything is not an isolated island. What happens in the environment impacts us because us, the people are coming from the environment and to the environment we go back. Thank you very much, Jadaya. Wow. So one, it's amazing. I'm grateful to learn that the, these processes are, you know, happening. I know you said that it's not easy because of the online environment, but please continue, you know, in your fight and in your advocacy for this. And then, you know, like she said, you know, we come from the environment to the environment we return. And so that's why it's so important that we take care of it with the lifetime that we have as well and leave something better for those who come after us. Um, I'm definitely going to, I'm just, like reflecting on, you know, uh, and what I'm hearing in this room, you make me want to <laughs> make me want to just like work even harder uh, and get involved more with the governmental climate processes here in, you know, my city and in my country as well. Um, I've passed the same question to Michael Ronda. Um, you know, the question is, you know, just to bring it back, like learning about your work and like why you're uplifting uh, your voice in this moment. Um, la misma pregunta, por favor, cuéntanos sobre qué tú haces y por qué estás alzando tu voz por la protección de nuestro planeta uh, en ese día uh, internacional del medio ambiente. Hola a todos, ¿cómo están? Primero que nada, gracias por invitarme, ¿ok? Yo soy Michael Ronda, soy mexicano, soy actor y cantante. Soy un apasionado por el medio ambiente, amo nuestro planeta. Y cuando me invitaron no dudé en aceptar, porque me parece muy importante hablar y que se abra esta conversación, sobre todo entre jóvenes que somos el futuro del mañana. So thank you for that. So like um, what I understood just now, of course, like thank you one for, this is what I'm saying, like, Entiendo español más que puedo hablar, so I'm going to be going in and out between Spanish and English. I understand better than I can speak, but what I heard and understood just now as an actor, as a singer, as someone who loves the environment, using the platform that you're on, like, to to express that and to help people understand, like, that's what that's what I got, you know, and he also said thank you for the invitation. Um, I gotta say, like, you know, in Michael's example, like, we also get to see and show how no matter what you're doing, whether like, you know, you're into music, whether you're into art, whether you're into culture, whether you're a whole physicist, like other people here, there's always a way in an area to make your environment better and to show up for what you know and what you love. So that's part, that's part of why he's here coming all the way from the faraway land of Mexico City. Um, so, you know, thank you again, um, you know, for being here with us. And so, you know, with that, mm -hmm. I'll pass to you as well to, uh, to Xiaoyuan. 
Um, same question, you know, why is it important that you're here today? Yeah, so uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Sharon or Charlene. And um, so for me personally, I'm actually a founder of an organization that uh, my, called My H2O. And we are working collectively with young people all across China, focusing on how well, do you bring like, clean water to the communities in need. Um, and like many developing communities, China has improved great economically, but there's a, still a lot of challenges with its environmental, especially water quality and there's still a number of villages that are accessing, lacking access to clean water. And so that's kind of where uh, we have been stepping in. We have been working with a nationwide network of young volunteers. And these are mostly like high school students or university students. They're all across China. And we're sending them in into these rural communities to really test the water quality, to carry out awareness campaigns locally with the villagers, with the local schools. And also in that process, like mapping out these information onto a common data platform. And in that process of the mapping, these young volunteers, they also get to understand a part of China China where the environment might not be as great and the people might not be as privileged to enjoy the better environment that's happening in other places, right? So, so then our volunteer base, like data map, is now acting as a hub to support these villages, these communities, and finding resources that they need to improve their all lo local water schemes, to track the ongoing progress of the environmental development in each of these communities where solutions are already delivered. And many of young, our young volunteers really in that process, they also learn about these issues. They're fundraising for these communities. They're supporting the change and witnessing the change. And they're going back every year to these communities to see, has the environment improved? And if it hasn't, is there any sort of advocacy work that we can do? Is there any sort of funding that we can support this community into developing better? So. So far, we've already worked with over hundreds of university teams across China, collecting data over thousands of villages and delivered a lot of these solutions to tens of thousands of beneficiaries. So I think here I'm really standing alongside these young volunteers that we have been working with in the past five years. And we're really calling for more youth to say, like, you can also join initiatives like this, join efforts like this, and kind of join that process of environmental restoration, whether it's mapping the information, fundraising for it, developing solutions are just writing a statement calling for more action, right? And these issue um, is like all of these issues are out there. So maybe starting with this water day, if anyone's interested, we would love to have more people join these initiatives together starting from today and maybe more and more World Environmental Days to come. Yeah. Thank you, Xiaoyuan. Like that, so that y'all hear that in one of the great, in the biggest one of the biggest, most high population countries in the entire world. We have a young person leading the way in helping like folks get access to clean water all over the country. She said over hundreds of universities, like, you know, like some of the top minds in your nation, like that is literally amazing. And like, just understand that in the context and how like how many people's lives that, that can affect, how many people will be healthier as a result. Clean water, I mean, where I'm from, we believe human needs are human rights and clean water is absolutely one of those things. Shout out to the SDGs. If you know what SDG access to clean water is, put it in the comments. Um, the prize you get is bragging rights. And you know, that's that's cool too. Shouts out to you. But thank you so much for, you know, uplifting that. I'm literally inspired. And if, you know, <laughs> hey, I think we have to have a conversation because that that's super cool. Um, so, all right, let's go to the next question. Um, I'll start with uh, Michael for this one, right? Like the question for everyone just to start thinking about it is like what actions in particular can youth collectively take to uh, protect the environment? Or um, can yeah. you Justo creo que esto es bien importante porque de pronto siento que hay mucha información y se vuelve un poco agotador, ¿no? No tires la basura ahí, no desperdices mucha agua, no utilices plástico, cuida tu medio ambiente y se vuelve como... Sí, como que son muchas cosas y de pronto abruma. Yo creo que algo muy padre y muy interesante que podemos hacer es elegir una tarea. De pronto, meterte a bañar y no usar tanta agua o no usar más plástico. Es decir, elegir una tarea y empezar con esa. Y después agregas otra tarea. Después otra y otra y otra, ¿no? 
Porque empezar con 1,500 cosas, la verdad es muy difícil y nadie lo va a hacer. Hace un año, antes de empezar la pandemia, me di la tarea con dos amigos de sembrar un millón de árboles en México. Fue hermoso. Pero antes de sembrar ese millón de árboles, sembramos 100. Y después sembramos 500. Y cuando habíamos sembrado 500, dijimos, ok, hagamos el juego más grande. Y decidimos sembrar un millón de árboles y lo hicimos. Con esto, quiero decir que es bien importante hacer las cosas a escala. Si hoy yo les recomiendo o les pido mil cosas, la verdad nadie los va a hacer porque es como un gradiente saltado. Los invito a que decidan una cosa para cuidar el medio ambiente. Por ejemplo, cuando te metas a bañar, no utilizas tanta agua. Pon una cubeta que se llene la cubeta mientras se caliente el agua y esa agua la puedes reciclar para otra cosa y después ya te bañes. Esa es una cosa. No uses plástico o recicla tus botellas de plástico, por ejemplo. No tires la basura en la calle ni en las playas. Tíralas en un lugar donde... En un bote de basura. Decidan una de esas acciones, háganlas y trabajemos para tener un mundo mucho mejor. Nuestra casa. Eso. Oh, I love it. So, very, like, super practical tips, right? So, what I understood just now. <laughs> um, <laughs> no worries. It's like, you know, but it's like, it, it makes perfect sense. It's super practical, right? So, it's saying, like, there's a whole lot of information. It can get tiring. It can get overwhelming. And there's, like, a million and one things you can do, right? So, it's like, you got to no plastics, no water, don't bathe, don't do, you know, there's, like, so much, um, so much information out there. But really, a key thing to do is to start with one thing. And to start exactly. by doing one thing and like building that out little by little. He gave the example that, you know, he decided he was going to plant, you know, a million trees in Mexico. But it's like, okay, well, him and two friends, like we're, that's what we're going to do. But how do you start with that? You start with a hundred from there, you know, just like little by little. If the thing that you're going to commit to is reducing your plastics, do that little by little. And that's how, if you have many, many people doing that little by little, it adds up to a whole lot. But the key is just to get started with, you know, one step at a time. Exactly. Because I think it's going to be easier for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's like, it's, it's the individual and collective action. So I'm passing the question to uh, whoever wants to take it. Um, who, who wants to go? Tell you, you, you in? I, I feel sure. <laughs> yeah, the question again is just, you know, practical things that we can do collectively as young people. Yeah, I think um, I think one thing that's really important is um, learning to make your voices heard, right? Like how do young people like the social media is all out there. There's a lot of, you know, with TikTok and everything, there's a lot of random short videos delivering content sometimes might not be as effective or as meaningful. Right. So how do we actually instill meaningful messages in there? How do we actually make these things heard? And that's one thing we learn um, as we're doing our own initiatives or carrying out our own missions is that you need to learn to increase your visibility. If you believe that this mission is something that should be heard by everyone, how do you make it make sure that it reaches everyone? Because I remember when I was much younger, um, like the reason that I got into environmental protection area was because of the influence of like Jane Goodall and her organization, because of the books that Rachel Carson wrote about the Silent Spring, right? So it's kind of these ideologies that affected me and made me realize that yeah like this is interesting I've never thought about it that way I've never thought about my relationship with nature until I see all these idols bringing the, forward these new ideologies and giving me something new to think about with it with with my relationship with regarding to nature so for young people like if you have that thought already if you want to influence more people like this is the right way to do it right maybe like one message that you say on like a short video it can get to like 10 other people and they would start thinking about how they relate to nature and then they would ask that questions more and that would spread more right so it's kind of that spreading of the ideology and passing on of that message and talking to people making sure it gets heard and finding creative ways to deliver, deliver that message to a much wider audience and I think right now that's needed 
more than ever before because a lot of these environmental things is still not really the mainstream it's still not within the main main school curriculum which is weird right like it should be and so there's a lot of a lot of places where it's not as widespread yet so how can we find the right channel to make it make sure that it gets to as many people as possible then we do need as many people kind of coming together collectively making that voice together as much as possible so to me that would be one of the really critical things to push forward yeah. Y'all hear that? Advocacy, using your platforms for things that are reasonable and helpful to the community. So if you're going to share memes, with, and memes are great. They're fantastic. They don't cost anything you know, to send. They're environmental friendly. And you can be spreading information that helps your planet too. So you can do, you can do both. It's a yes and. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, we're just going to shift really quickly. If we can get super you know succinct but you know hit us with you know what's on your mind um the last question for now was just you know well youth i think we kind of started getting into this actually like youth have been you know in the past you know couple years and historically like we've been leaders in stepping up to address you know global problems so like what actions have you seen from young people that give you hope for a better future um uh for michael you know in los últimos yes. años um, los jóvenes uh, hemos sido líderes en combatir a problemas globales, entonces uh, uh, quiero preguntarle qué acciones has visto uh, de los jóvenes que daré esperanza por el uh, mejor futuro. Bueno, you... hace poco vi un, una campaña que hizo un amigo mío que se trataba de reciclar baterías. Cuando empezó se me hizo un poco disparado porque no sé qué tanta conciencia existe al respecto. De pronto se convirtió en algo gigante. Hoy en México existen muchos lugares en donde tú puedes ir a dejar tus baterías y esas baterías van a ser recicladas. Eso se me hizo fantástico porque una batería no sé cuántos miles de litros contamina en el mar. Esa fue una que me encantó. Y otra es que en México, por una campaña muy grande que se hizo entre jóvenes, están prohibidas las bolsas de plástico de un solo uso. Y eso es fantástico. Creo que me quedo con esas dos. So we got two examples. So you said he's got a friend with a company who has like that recycles batteries. So now all over Mexico, there are stations where you can go and deposit batteries and recycle them because it turns out that a single battery result like results from thousands of, well, it can contaminate like thousands of liters, which I just learned. So, you know, be responsible about how you recycle your batteries. And then also he gave like another example of like a friend who's assisting folks in like, you know, like reducing single use, I, I thought I understood reducing single use plastics. Um, so like there's no more just like single use uh plastics uh and just campaigning to make that happen because if you're going to end up using plastic make it reusable you know it's just super simple use it more than once you know i have a, a water bottle right next to me and i'm just like ah oh, okay gotta do better but you know that personal accountability matters as well gracias por sus ejemplos um who else wants to uh chime in to the, oh. i will try to jump in here um, so I want to give like big examples because we are almost everywhere. We are doing everything. We are planting trees. We have hundreds of campaigns for million tree or 10 million tree. And we also have um, Fridays for Future, which is a very much um, have implications on how policies makes in um, being made in the country, which is a very huge event, let me say. Uh, I also want to encourage people who are working um, to protect yes, the please. Amazon because um, we are under, we understand how Amazon is important for our um, uh, planet and we also understand how it's been systematically destroyed by fires, by mining, by degradating, by cutting trees and so on. And from here, I want to salute my friend um, Paloma for trying to push it not only by activism, but also by laws and legislations to protect them, um, the Amazon. Um, I also want to tell everyone around the world who are trying to um, start big uh, flame by a small spark, like uh, striking from your school or 
uh, like planting tree inside of your house or uh, like trying to protect a small animal or help e even help a small cat to deliver a new another small baby cat for example there are many simple activists or simple activities that we do in our uh, life that actually have bigger impact than we think and i just want to say to every young person around the world that you can actually hold um, every um, decision maker or world leader in your country or other countries accountable for what they did, because that's exactly what we mean by um, um, climate justice and by environmental justice. Yet we are not there yet, but we can also go there by small steps going bigger and bigger. Thank you for reminding us of the value of all life, right? Like, of course, you know, helping a kitten, you know, be safe or give birth, you know, <laughs> like those things, hey, those things are also helpful for our environment. And a shout out to your friend Taluma as well um, for the work that they're doing. And thank you so much for that. Um, definitely just like a lot, I'm, I'm reflecting a lot. Thank you for such a heartfelt um, response. Um, Xiaoyuan, would you like to close this out with this portion before we, uh, before to the crowd, we're good to hear from you in literally seconds. Yeah, sure. So um, I think, I think just to summarize that, I think um, when I see young people in the generation right now, they are the ones doing all these volunteer work. They are the ones um, convincing their school to go solar on some of the energy consumptions, right? They're changing uh, how their sc uh, schools are investing in some sort of energy. And they're um, you know, fundraising for other communities to build water cisterns, to build water plants. These are all things that we're witnessing the young people of the next generation do. So imagine what might happen when this generation of younger people who are still in their teens or even you know less than 10 years old as they eventually take more leadership roles as they come to the front of the stage become the ones who are making the decision about the future of our planet if the people and that's making the decisions about our futures like 10 20 years down the road are the ones who have that ideology have that knowledge imagine at that time what the world could be, what the potential could be for our future. It would might be a very different um, decision-making scheme from now because they are instilled with this sense of eagerness, sense of um, almost sense of urgency that this generation of leaders might not necessarily have. So I'm really hoping for that to happen and hoping for the work that we do now with our young people can uh, have that like impact uh, 20, 30 years down the road as we kind of look forward to the future. Yeah, that would be my hope, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Embrace the power that you have now so that when you can, like when you continue throughout your journeys, like you will be the ones who will make the decisions, who will be able to like continue to protect our planet and to make it, you know, better along the way. So it's not just the, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up thing. It's what can you be doing right now to assume responsibility to make a contribution toward making things better. And so also I want to just say, because mistakes shall not exist here. Um, yeah, so to, to Michael, what he has actually said is not that his friend had a company, but his friend had a campaign for renewable batteries. Campania in Espanol means campaign and not company. So I just, yeah, little correction. Um, my bad. Pero no me. Pero I want to just say thank you to all three of you. Thank you, Xiaoyuan. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Nisri, for like, you know, taking the time to be here with us and to share your thoughts. We hope that you've been inspired. We're very interested to know, like, what are you committing to? And you've heard at least several different examples in multiple different languages. And it's like Inga said, power is not given, it is taken. So what will you do to, like, please put your commitment in the chat. You can use the hashtag generation restoration on social media as well. We like to just highlight you to see what you're doing uh, in the world. And just thank you folks so much again for being here with us. And yeah, and don't make sure like, you know, we want to know what you're doing like right now. I mean, literally put it in the chat. What are you going to commit to moving forward? And then we have like a small message and then we'll close out. Thank you folks so much. So let me see. I'm like, you know, just going through the um, chat. Okay, cool. I'm seeing folks in Honduras for like the past six years that young folks have been uh, doing work around like making a better, a, a volunteer system uh, in Honduras among young people for the environment. That's super cool. Okay, shout out to you, Mario Pinel. Okay. 
I'm like, you know, just going through looking for your commitments. Okay, shout out to the Green Hearts Guardians Council on building a network of green heart forests. So in India, we're protecting the native wildlife and fighting plastic and pollution. That's super cool. Okay. What else are people doing in the, uh, what else are people doing around the world? Interested to see, interested to see. What I'll commit to is to using plastic a lot less in my own home. It's something that my parents have been convincing me to do. They've been encouraging me to do that. And uh, <laughs> that's the commitment that I make here in front of the whole world today. I'm gonna reuse um, my bottles for sure. And thank you. I see people coming through all the way from Mexico. I see people coming through from, Oh my goodness, okay. Like all over, shout out to the Philippines as well. Yeah, so please keep it coming through and we love to continue to spotlight you. I'm going to pass it back to, actually we're going to hear a message now from the Youth Climate Compact. Um, but before we do that, just want to ask um, to our panelists, to Shalya and to Nasreen, to Michael, uh, any last words? No pressure. Yeah, I will just say um, I would like always to end up by saying that um, this message is not only for young people, um, but it's also for the future, for the um, uh, previous generations, for the um, decision makers, for businesses, for um, policymakers, head of state and everything. Just remember that our eyes are on you. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, from my point of view, I'm curious. So for everyone who has been here tonight, who has heard about all these different tips, all these different ideas, all these different thoughts about what actions can you take? Is there one takeaway that you have? Is there one little more ac action that you're gonna do starting from today or tomorrow, right? Starting our World Environment Day, what is one thing that you're gonna change about your life? What is one action that you're gonna take? Are you gonna write that email to join that organization? Or are you gonna finally delete that like fast food app or whatever app that's delivering food to your home or not wasting that plastic? You know, what is one action that you have taken away? Because we're all here today, we're all spreading our brains out for everyone, but is there something that you got is that something that is going to change your life from the World Environment Day on? And that's one thing that I'm really hoping for and hoping for this thing to spread from you to more people, to more people. And that's that's my hope for tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, ultimas palabras, um, Michael. Um, you know, te sientes positivo por el futuro. Sí, muchísimas gracias por haberme invitado. De veras, muchas, muchas gracias. Y confío en que todos vamos a tomar una acción al respecto. Confío en que todos podemos hacer un cambio. Confío en que todos queremos un mundo mejor. Y depende de nosotros, de nadie más. Gracias por invitarme, les mando un beso enorme y a cuidar nuestro planeta. Chao, chao. Chao. You know, like I, he trusts and believes that like, you know, that we will be able to make the change, that we can make it in no one else really. And that, you know, that we'll be able to take, what I was getting is that we'll be able to take that energy moving forward as well. And, and of course, thank you for accepting our invitation. Um, gracias por, uh, por su tiempo para hablar con nosotros. You're welcome, thank you. Goodbye. Bye, see you. Thank you everybody. So before we shift to the um, the message from the Youth Climate Report, just want to highlight some folks that we see in the chat as well. Shout out to Smart Art, the Green Ambassadors in the United Arab Emirates, organizing seminars to educate people. Shout out to Erlene. She said that she's going to come up with more tasty vegetarian recipes um, to share with the world and motivate her family to try. Um, hey, send me an invite, maybe. It, it said you're in New York. We, you know. I, I'm a vegetarian too. I, I definitely like that. Uh, Dwan James says he participates in international coastal cleanup each day in National Tree Planting Day. And that's excellent. I'm seeing Kenya in the building from Nakuru. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Howard just committed to meatless Mondays at least twice a month. Y'all, we had this Zoom is being recorded, so it's on the record. Like you said, meatless Mondays. I have a recipe for some navy bean soup. I'll send it your way. Um, Charlene Mohammed. Oh, hey, mom. That's great. Uh, she says she's giving renewable bags to all of our neighbors. Love to see it. So this is a family effort. So I want to say thank you again. Um, isn't that fantastic? We're going to pass it now to the message from the Youth Climate Report. 
We're going to wrap up the day, see a few last words and um, say thank you. Oh, question. Uh, Nisreen, we did get to hear from you, right? I just want to, I want to flag that and give you space just to, I, I'm pretty sure we had, but just a question. Yeah, okay. Just making sure. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, y'all. Uh, I'm very glad to have uh, an extra time. It's like a head start for me. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to highlight the role um, or our new youth advisory group um, the UN Secretary General's Youth Advisory Group. Um, it's a very, uh, let me say, special group because we represent not only different geographical spaces, but also a different background. We have an economist from East um, Europe, Moldova, um, which is Vlad. We have an um, uh, indigenous um, lady from uh, India, uh, Archana. We have a lawyer from Brazil, Paloma. And we have also Sophia from uh, North America. And uh, she's a student. And we have um, Ernest from Fiji. Um, I mean, the group is not only diverse, as I mentioned, in the age, but also in the background, because we all um, we all work like a puzzle together to complement the picture uh, of our work. It's very important to highlight that um, we are having more spaces within the UN system right now and we should actually use these spaces very wisely to make the environment not only the issue of the UNEP uh, or UN environment or not only the issue of the Secretary General but all of the UN agencies and I really recommend that everyone works with the environmental um, let me say environmental in, um, profile or environmental uh, a part of, of their different projects because as I mentioned earlier, in, environment will impact all of the SDGs and whatever you are working with. Um, thank you very much for having me today. And um, I just salute everyone um, around the world who are trying to save the, their planet or our planet in their own ways. Thank you very much. Happy World Environment Day. Thank you and happy thank World you. Environment Day. Y'all hear that, get involved with the processes where you are. So now on that exact note, we're going to hear from a, a quick message from the, the Youth Climate Report. Then we're going to have some last words to close us out. Thank you again to our panelists and to everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy Environment Day. My name is Mark Terry, and I'm the Executive Director of the Youth Climate Report, a partner program of the United Nations since 2011. We showcase films produced by the Global Community of Youth, and today we'd like to share with you a quick look at four of our films that deal with today's theme of ecosystem restoration. The films are from Indonesia, the United States, Kenya, and Australia. And after this video, if you'd like to see more, please visit our website at youthclimatereport.org. Enjoy. A land of true beauty. From the blue ocean and the reef to the rainforest and the valleys. I live in paradise. But paradise doesn't last forever. In the summer of 2019, 206 temperature records were broken in just 90 days. 12 million hectares of land has been burned. 25 people and an estimated 48 million animals in New South Wales alone have been killed. Kenya is an agricultural nation with over 12 million people residing in areas with degraded lands which are often caused by lack of proper soil and water conservation methods. This results to diminished water supplies, soil erosion, soil nutrient depletion, and low agricultural productivity. As a result, loss of vegetation cover occurs and this makes the communities susceptible to climate hazards like droughts. My name is Farid Aliski. I'm 18 years old student College of Marine Science and Technology in Indonesia. Coral Reef Ecosystem is part of the sea that has so much beauty to contribute to the world. Healthy coral is natural protection from climate impact. But 
when the sea can sink 36% of anthropogenic carbon dioxide in the earth, now the sea get real impact to cause us. The sea become more acidic. We see daily reports of rainforests being degraded and destroyed at alarming rates. Of animals, we see in corporate logos and team mascots being pushed to the brink of extinction. We see the planet propelling further out of balance, and we're scared. But through the clarity of youth, we will channel our fear into action. Today, we set out to achieve our first victory in Ecuador with our partners Rainforest Trust and Echo Minga. But we won't stop there. Our vision is that one day, every young person will feel empowered to make a measurable difference in the future of their planet. What a great note to end on. So, you know, like the situation, as we've been talking about it, like, you know, the video helps you to see like in real life and in real time, the effects of what not taking care of our environment can do. But just remember that, yes, the situation is dire. The situation is serious. And we would be lying to you if we said otherwise, you know? And at the same time, just as the situation is serious, the opportunity for change is also tremendous. We have an opportunity now to accelerate our process and accelerate our progress in a way that humanity hasn't even seen before, because now we absolutely must. We don't have a choice in the matter. There's a lot of adjusting that has to be made in terms of lifestyle, in terms of government accountability. But as you've seen throughout this panel, there's already great progress being made too in some really amazing and fantastic ways. And the people on this panel have only told you even just like a portion of the great work that they're doing to help make our environment better. So you do your part as well. Together, we'll make a better environment. We'll be reimagining, recreating, and restoring our world ecosystems for a better space for us right now and in the future and taking care of our planet. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate you and we're looking forward to seeing what you do to contribute to this great effort.